Hey, I'm Libby and welcome back to Liberatory Love. So I want to talk about overwhelm today and bring up two different approaches to overwhelm and name the benefit of either one. And they're both three steps. So I'll start with just taking three breaths before we dive in. So I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. On the second one, I'm going to invite you to lengthen, reach, and open up and expand the chest. Allow yourself to take up space, inviting yourself into this short container. For this third one, I'm going to invite you to connect with your heart and just connect to your present moment awareness. If there's anything moving within you, if there's anything alive, any inner dialogue happening, any self-judgment, any stories, any things that are happening around in your environment, just take note. A lot of times when we are stressed, the gut reaction can be to fight, fly, flight, or freeze. These are nervous system programmed responses to pain, stress, trauma. They get ingrained very early on and they show up in very subtle ways. Fight can look like literally pushing on life, on other people, on yourself. Flight can look like running away from other people, from life, from yourself. And freeze can look like staying where you are, but not really seeing yourself, not really seeing others, not really seeing life, not really being here, dissociating, removing yourself from the body, removing yourself from the experience. So three breaths, first of all, this is not either of the techniques, but I just want to offer that since this is a, a, a channel that is oriented in somatic work, giving yourself three breaths to reground so that you can even see the behavior that you're dropping into. So over the years I've had, I've been in transition just like many of my friends have been in transition. It's also been COVID times. So most people's lives on the planet got disrupted. And my one of my best friends is a nurse and she would offer to me at a time when I felt extremely confused about my career, extremely self-doubting about what to do next. Just make a list, Libby. Just choose your ABC. Just write down your ABC. Just find your next three things. And I want to offer that first because I'm a creative thinker. So I'm going to go into my creative <laughs> approach next. But for many people, the linearity is calming, is helpful. And when you can't see five minutes down the road, when you can't see a day down the road, when you can't see five days down the road, you can't see five months down the road, whatever is this new moment that feels disorienting. Just want to offer you ABC. What are your three things? What are the next three, three steps you can take? Or what are three things that you think you need to do? And then can you put them in an order? Can you be the orienter of those three things? I really want to thank my best friend, Tatiana for bringing this practice into my life. It's also very similar to my mom's mindset and the level of organization that she brought into all things in managing a home with 12 children. On the flip side, as a creative thinker, as someone very futuristic and seeking radical change in my life, I want to offer three things that help me on a larger level. And still, I'm someone who needs the ABC when I get way too big picture. But as someone who is big picture and who wants to create things that haven't been done before and sees things that I don't believe have been done before uh, or have been seen before 
and want to actualize them and want to bring them into reality, which is what creativity and innovation are, the bringing in what we have not brought forth yet. I have been following these three steps over the years, which are listen, receive, respond. Listen, pay attention, listen to your body. Before I was even doing somatic work, I still used to write, I still write. I've gone in and out of prayer and different spiritual frameworks. I've used yoga as an anchor for the last 10 years for paying attention to the body. Just tuning in, just getting clear for yourself, what are some ways that I choose to listen? Not just hear, but really listen. What am I paying attention to? Who am I paying attention to? What voices matter? Respond, or sorry, receive. What do I actually want to receive from this information? What do I need to receive? What do I want to receive? Because need to receive might be, I'm in pain right now. I'm unhappy right now. I don't know how to fix it right now. It also might mean I see something better for myself. I want something more for myself. So receive can be multiple things at the same time. But if you're not listening, then you won't know what to receive. And then third, respond. What is one step that I can take toward this? In some ways, this is where you can bring in the ABC. But respond also might be as simple as I receive this vision and I'm choosing to respond. I'm choosing to take it on. I'm choosing to take a step toward it. I'm choosing to let myself cry. I'm choosing to connect with a friend. I'm choosing to share. I'm choosing to invite someone else into this vision. I'm choosing to look for help. I'm choosing to ask for help. I'm choosing to open myself in prayer. I'm choosing to say, I don't know. So two options, if things feel totally chaotic and you have to take steps and you have multiple deadlines and multiple things to do, ABC it. If you have no idea what to do and there is no deadlines and nothing driving you to take that next step, <clears throat> LRR. <laughs> Listen, receive, respond. That is a cycle. So you'll end up back at listening again. There's no getting out of listening. Let me know what you think in the comments below.